The following program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Art Nelson Ministries. Every person on earth has their own individual relationship with God or without God, just like every person on earth has their own individual fingerprints. Welcome to Voices of Victory, where the victory that overcomes the world is our faith in God. On today's show, I'm really excited, family. We're going to learn about something that is going to give birth to intimacy between you and God. In fact, I'm teaching on the same subject matter of first things first, where I'm showing you how to operate in the kingdom of God. But today's lesson, after you've learned it, you will never be the same again. Let's climb into scripture. And it says this in Matthew chapter six, it says this in verse 31. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Praise God, all these things will be added unto you. Now listen to this, family. There's a, a, a word in that scripture that I read that actually brings to naught the two verses that are before that word. And that word is but. I don't know if you know anything about the word but, but the word but means to bring to naught everything that is before the word but. So but, but means brought to naught. So if I say uh, to my, to my uh, to, uh, if, you, if a guy says to his girlfriend, uh, I really love you girl, but you really do be getting on my nerves. Well, the I love you girl part is, is obsolete and is, is nullified with the but. And now all that's left is that she gets on his nerves. If I say, I really do like you, but I don't think this is gonna work. What's going on? The but cancels out everything that is before it. And that scripture we just read, it said, therefore take no thought saying, what shall I eat, what shall I drink, wherewithal shall I be clothed? But it says, because the Gentiles seek that, then it says, but, and then I wanna hit the word after the but, because that word family is of absolute importance and of great significance. And that's what we're gonna to touch on today. We're gonna to talk about the word that comes after the but there in the first uh, uh, two words of the 33rd verse, where it says, but seek ye first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, this is what I want you to know. Some time ago, if you've been watching my show for a while, you know I talked to you about how righteousness can only be defined by God. In fact, it says seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness because there's a, a righteousness that the world considers righteous. There's actions that your family considers righteous. There's things that people in the street consider righteous, but it says and his righteousness, which means God has his own form of righteousness. And he explained when I talked to you about that, that the righteousness that comes from God is the righteousness of faith, which means you believe God and it is accredited to you as righteous just like Abraham did in Romans chapter 4 verse 3. So God defines the way of being right. Righteousness is defined by him and it's called his righteousness. But I want you to see that he also will define what he considers seeking. Because remember, we're talking today about pursuit. I'm talking to you about the power in pursuit and what seeking actually does. But it says seek first the kingdom of God, which is God's way of doing things and his righteousness and all these things to be added unto you. God's saying, I'm gonna get you all the stuff you'll ever need. I'm gonna make sure you have more than enough. I'm gonna see to it that if the world around you is starving, that you have abundance. Why? Because you did what it talked about there in the beginning. You sought, you went after, you pursued, you went uh, 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 in, in hot pursuit of God's way of doing things first. But listen to this, family. Whenever we talk about seeking, I want you to know what that word seek actually means. That word seek means to inquire. It means to investigate. It actually also means to meditate. And here's the, here's the, uh, the biggest part that I like is that it means to plot. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. When you're seeking, the word seek actually means to inquire, to investigate, to pursue, and it also means to meditate and to plot. Why would a person wanna plot after the pursuit of God and the things of God. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain that to you here in a minute. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about investigate. The thing about investigation is that investigation requires sacrifice. It, re it requires the sacrifice of time. It requires the sacrifice of, of uh, energy. It re requires the sacrifice of efforts. Why? Because I am investigating. Another way to say that is to say search out. In fact, one of the definitions was also to search out. 
But what that means is I am giving time, energy, effort to search out, to seek out, to pursue whatever it is that I want out of this um, thing that I'm pursuing. Anytime you pursue anything. But this is what I want you to know, family. Pursuit, uh, the level of your desire will determine the level of your pursuit. I'm going to say that again. The level of your desire will determine the level of your pursuit. If I am... Uh, uh, um, if I'm really hungry for this special restaurant that there's only one restaurant in the whole state, if I'm really hungry and I really value that restaurant, I'll drive an hour and a half to go to that place. I'll drive two hours to get to that place if there's only one in the state. But if I'm not really hungry, I, I won't drive that far. If I'm not, if I don't really value it and desire it that much, I won't drive that far. Also, uh, if there's a, if there's a thousand places that are cheap and that are close by and I don't desire them or I don't, I don't uh, value them, I won't pursue them even though there's a thousand within reach. So what I'm showing you is that the level of your desire would determine the level of your pursuit. If I really desire it, I'll go hard for it. If I don't really desire it, I won't do anything that pertains to it. And every time you seek or you've ever sought or pursued any, anything in your life, it was always a demonstration of the level of uh, 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 the level of respect, reverence, the level of value that you put on the thing that you pursued. So if I don't really care, it's because I don't really value. If I don't really pursue, I don't really seek, it's because I don't really value or consider it valuable. If I don't really go after it, it's because I don't really see it as beneficial to me. And if I don't see it as beneficial to me, it won't be beneficial to me and my lack of pursuit will not bear any fruit. So here's what you need to know. Pursuit is where fruit comes from. There's got to be pursuit if there's ever going to be fruit. I had to pursue my girlfriend so she could become my wife and be the mother of my babies. I had to be, so we couldn't, we couldn't uh, have fruit, which is the children, until there was first a pursuit, which was me going after her. Um, but listen to me. Pursuit displays your level of value. Anytime there's a high level of pursuit, it tells you that person really genuinely values that thing, that one or whatever the thing is that they're pursuing. But notice in the scripture, it says seek first. Now that tells you anytime there's a first that tells you there may be a second, a third or fourth thing that God tells you to pursue. But he wants his self, his own way of doing things, his own way of operating in his word to be your first pursuit, the first thing that you go after. Now, uh, for instance, there's people that put, um, uh, and let me, let me explain to you like this. People put high pursuit on things as a result of high perceived contents and value. So like, let's say I, I perceive that that restaurant is the best restaurant in the state and that food is gonna be really good. I'm gonna be really satisfied because I perceive that the contents of that restaurant is satisfying to me. I'll be willing to pursue it with a high pursuit because I got a high established value. Kind of like how this is a, a, a rapper, a famous rapper might come to Seattle and uh, they might be downtown Seattle at the, at the, at the uh, conference center somewhere doing a big conference. And it's a big, big conference, the best rapper in all of America. Well, they down there now, and I may not even be interested in going. Now, why would, why would I not be interested in going? Because I don't have any value on the contents that I perceive is inside of the rapper. I don't, I don't have any value for what he could say that would be beneficial to me or what he could say that would be uh, something that I would consider a reward. So because there's no value in his contents, by my opinion, because it's my perceived value of his contents, then I won't go there. And it's only 10 minutes away to drive from my house to Seattle downtown to where the concert would be. But listen to this. Uh, I wouldn't do it because I don't perceive value in his contents. But yet if, uh, if Bishop Oyedipo came from Nigeria to Chicago, and I've actually already done this before, I would fly to Chicago. I would drive to Chicago, catch a bus if I had to to Chicago to go and see Bishop David Oyedipo from uh, um, the Winter's Chapel in Nigeria. Why would I do all that? Because of my perceived value of the content that he contains. So because I see what's in Bishop Oyedipo as extremely valuable, I would go a far distance and, and long and hard to pursue him. I'm not saying I'm pursuing a man or nothing like that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of explain to you what I'm pursuing uh, when I do that. Uh, uh, pursue of, of Oyedipo here in a second. But it's because I perceive that the contents that he contains is extremely valuable, so it would cause a result of extreme pursuit or me seeking with all that I have. Now, 
the reason that I would go all the way to Chicago, just let me go ahead and get on this now. The reason I would go all the way to Chicago to see Bishop David Oyedepo uh, at, 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 at Bill Winston's church is because I understand that after getting to know him and reading a lot of his books and stuff, that I want the relationship with God that Oyedepo has with God now. Let's say that again. My pursuit is not a man. My pursuit is not a man or, or being like a man or, or none of that. I'm not trying to imitate a man or any of that. But my pursuit is because my perceived value of his contents tells me that I want the relationship with God that he has with God. Now, why do I say that I want the same relationship with God that he has with God? It's because, family, what you've got is what you've sought. I'm going to say that again. In your life, whatever you've got, it's because that's what you've sought. And different people have different levels of relationships with God because of their different levels of pursuit. And remember I said different levels of pursuit bring about different levels of fruit because where there is no pursuit, there can be no fruit. But like I pursued my wife, then she's my wife, now we have babies. So if there's a high level of pursuit, we have a whole lot of babies. If there's a low level of pursuit, we have only a few babies, me and my wife had three. But listen to me, what I'm telling you is that the fruit that comes forth out of a relationship is a result of whatever was sought, whatever went, was gone after, whatever person decided that they had to have it so much that they were willing to plot to get it. In fact, there's a story in the Bible found in Mark chapter 5 of a woman that had an issue of blood. You can go read it yourself later. It's found in uh, chapter 5, verse 25 through 34. And it tells us something about this woman with the issue of blood. She sought God in the way that the word seek is defined. She actually plotted to steal a miracle. I'm going to say that again. This story of the woman with the issue of blood found in Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 25 to about verse 34 or so. This woman plotted to steal a miracle. That means that she was in such pursuit of a miracle when she believed that the miracle power was in Jesus so much so that she schemed, she meditated on, and she came up with an idea after investigating the word of God as to how she would be healed. She'd investigated the Bible. She found in Malachi chapter four, verse two, that healing would be in his wings. That means that the hem of his garment. So she knew that he was walking in a big crowd of people and that the hem of his garment had healing power because she found it there in Malachi chapter four. And so she's like, I'm just going to touch the hem. I'm going to break through the crowd. She's not supposed to touch people. She's not supposed to be around people. What was she doing? She was plotting. Why? Because her pursuit demanded that she be willing to take a risk. Her, her level of desire determined that her level of pursuit would mean that she would take whatever risk necessary to gain access to her miracle. Why? Because her value on what was contained in the contents of that man made it worth her going after it with all of her might. You hear me, family? Listen to me. The level of your pursuit reveals the level of your desire. So if you don't have a desire for God's system to work and operate in your life, then you don't have to seek God's system to operate in your life. There's people who right now live in, in uh, uh, other countries like China. There's people in China that they have to have, they have, to have Bibles hidden and, and, and shipped in and, and like an underground railroad to get Bibles to people. And because of that, the people in the church, all the congregants would tear out one page of the Bible and they would memorize that page. They would read it and meditate on that one page and memorize that entire page of the Bible. And then they would have a time when they would transfer the page to another person. These are Christians family right now in China. What's going on? Well, they've got extremely high value on the word of God and the things of God. So much so that they take a single page ripped out of a Bible because it's illegal for them to even have Bibles in certain places there. So, so they tear, tear a page out and memorize it and spend time with God around the, what they learned out of that page. What is that? That's called extreme diligent seeking, which brings about extreme rewards because big pursuit brings big fruit. Now, here's what I want you to know, family. You don't have to pursue God with, in, with super intensity. You don't have to go after the things of God, the kingdom of God, the ways of God with all of your might. You don't have to do it at all. In fact, you don't have to go out after God with none of your might. You can choose to go after the devil, the world, and all the ways of the world if you like. But if you do choose to allow that but to cancel out all that stuff that was before it in the scripture that I read talking about what shall I wear, what shall I eat, what shall I drink, and, and, and going after stuff that the world goes after. Instead, you decide I'm going to 
scratch all that off and I'm going to seek first God. I'm going to go after God with all of my heart. I'm going to pursue God, the things of God and the ways of God and what? A relationship with God. And then what's going to happen is all kind of stuff is going to be added unto you and you're going to have intimate interactions with God that bring ultimate changes in your life, your environment and the atmosphere that you live in. Why? Because God is your great reward. I'm going to say that again. God is not only worth your absolute pursuit family, but he is a great reward. You see, family, the reason that I would go to Chicago um, to, to listen to Bishop Oyedipo is not because he's some kind of a special man that's different than every other man, uh, even though he is different than every other man, but it's because the relationship that he has with God is what I am uh, considering extremely valuable. And I know that the content and the how-tos of the developed relationship that he has will be revealed by the things that he says. For instance, there's a scripture in the Bible where Paul is talking. And when Paul is talking, he's talking to people and he says in, the, in Philippi, and he says to them, he says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Now, why did he personalize God? Why, how come he didn't say our God will supply all of your needs? Instead, he said to the, his partners in Philippi, he said, my God shall supply all of your needs. Now, the reason he said that family is because of this. And if you're taking notes, write this down. Every relationship with God is both individual and personal. I'm going to say that again. Every relationship with God is both personal and individual. So Paul had an individual relationship with God where he had a revelation as to how God would respond pertaining to the issues that dealt with Paul. So he said, my God, the God that I have a relationship with the God that responds to situations that pertain to me in such a way. The, the God who I know and I how I know he will respond. My God shall supply all of your needs. What did the Philippi people do? Well, they partnered with his ministry and they was given financially to him to help take care of his needs. And he said to them, because you financed uh, uh, the ministry and you're helping my ministry and my anointing to go forth, my God will supply all of your needs. Now, the reason you know that it's personal, of course, you can look up the word my, which I did some time ago, and it says uh, my my personal ownership, how, what I own. So not only um, uh, does that, that definition explain it to you, but the reason that it's obvious that he said it on purpose, my God, is because in the very next verse, he says our God. So first he says, he says our father in the very next verse. First he says, my God shall supply all of your need. And then he says our God in the next verse. So he's telling them the personal relationship, the personal display of God's abundance that I'm experiencing, you will experience by partnering with me. Why? Because every relationship is both individual and personal. Now, to get what Paul got, you have to do what Paul did. So for a person to have the relationship uh, uh, with God like Paul had, they have to do what Paul did. Now, remember I said every, per every relationship is both individual and personal. So Paul actually tells us what he did. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 when he says, I pray in tongues more than you all. That's why all nine gifts of the Spirit were expressed through Paul's relationship with God. Anything that you saw Paul do and the miracles and all the stuff you read in the Bible and you read through Acts and all the different things, all of that stuff came out of a relationship that Paul got from God after Paul pursued God. And then Paul gives you the method of operation. He gives you the means of pursuit right there in chapter 14 when he said, I pray in tongues more than you all. And tongues is a result of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I talked about that on a different show, uh, but it is important. It's easy to access. Just ask God to say, say, God, I want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to be able to speak in an unknown tongue, and I want to be able to gain access to the mysteries that give birth to revelations in my life. Just pray that simple prayer and go after it. But this is what I wanted you to know, family, if that's what you want. But this is what I want you to know. Paul's relationship was individual. Paul's results were a result of Paul's individual relationship. And every person on earth has their own individual relationship with God or without God, just like every person on earth has their own individual fingerprints. My fingerprints are different because my impact on the world is different than yours. 
That's why my fingerprints are different than yours. Actually, the same is true with every relationship. In fact, every relationship, if you're a parent, that you have with every child is actually different. Certainly, they will inherit all of your, your legacy and everything that you leave behind. They will inherit it equally if you decide to. But the relationship is personal and individual. For instance, um, uh, you're, you may have one child that's got more leadership qualities than another one. So you'll make that child a leader, but you'll make the other one a business person maybe uh, 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 to, to get, gain great wealth and you know that they'll invest in the, the leadership necessary for your business or whatever. So what I'm showing you is that individual relationship will determine that individual's outcomes. I'm gonna say that again. Every individual relationship will determine that individual's outcomes. This is why personal pursuit of God is absolutely necessary. In fact, every person on earth has the ability to be saved because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But every person has to individually receive Jesus as a substitute in the payment for their sin. So that means each individual has the individual relationship with Jesus. That's why when a person goes at the end to judgment, nobody can stand in and say, I, I vouch that he's a good person. No, it's that person's individual uh, scenario that brings about their outcome. Did they receive Jesus or did they reject Jesus? Did they receive payment for their sins or did they reject it and try to earn righteousness their own way? Because if they did it the wrong way by trying to earn it their own way, they won't be going to where Jesus is. But listen to me, family, every relationship is individual and personal. That's why you pursue it. In fact, something you need to know, the word relationship is a compound word. It comes from the word relate and fellowship. So every relationship is born from the places that you can relate in fellowship. That's why when you go to the grocery store, you'll see somebody and they'll say, oh, beautiful weather. Because the only place they can relate to you right now is in weather because they don't know you. You're a stranger, they're a stranger. Or they'll say, did you see what the Seahawks did? That was a great game. What are they doing? They're trying to small talk, but they're trying to relate. And the only place they can relate is that you two both go after the same team and, and, and believe in the same team. But listen to me, family. The same is true with God. And we decide how much of a relationship or how little of a relationship we will actually have with God. And as a result, by doing so, we decide how much fruit will be born out of our relationship. There's a scripture I want to look at real quick, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. And it says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him. Him is God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. How do they have to seek him? Diligently. How does God define seeking him? Diligently seeking. And that word diligently basically tells you the kind of seeking that is plotting to gain more relationship, that is plotting to learn what it takes to get more intimate with God, that is plotting to go after the miracles that come from God by the relationship, by doing whatever necessary to get it. Listen to me, family. God loves and rewards Diligent seeking of his self, diligent seeking of what his word says, diligent seeking of what his ways are, diligent seeking of a relationship that is both intimate, individual, and personal. Something about me, family, when I was in the penitentiary, I did, I did 10 plus years in the penitentiary. I used to be a gang leader, drug dealer. I was violent, hostile. I was deadly dangerous. But listen to this. When I, whenever there was a storm and it was really raining outside and it was super storming, I would go to the yard first. As soon as they called it, I would rush out to the yard. Why? Because in the prison, they just have a big yard where it's like a track and, and pull up bars and dip bars and stuff like that and weights. And so I would run to the yard. Why? Not because I wanted to go stand in the rain, but because I knew that barely anybody was out there. And I could go and walk the whole track and talk out loud to God. Now, I need my, some of you might think, oh, dude is a weirdo. He was out there walking around talking to God, and I sure was. And I waited for it to rain because I knew when it rained, I could go outside in the open air and just talk to God with alone with not being a lot of people. Because every time I was anywhere, it was thousands of people. The facility was huge uh, that I was at. But listen to me. And as a result, during that time that I walked the track in the rain all by myself, nobody knows about that. And you do now. Nobody knew about that except for me and God. But I knew that during that intimate time, I could go out there and I could walk the track and I could just ask questions and I would pray in the spirit and, and the scriptures would come up and answers would come. And I would just say, Lord, let's just go take a walk. What was I doing? It was an intimate interaction, but I was seeking answers. I was seeking to know him more. I was seeking to, to figure out why I was so aggressive and abrasive and angry and hostile and what it was in me that needed to come out of me so that he could be uh, uh, used, uh, he could use me 
for himself so that he could be glorified through me. What was necessary, God? I would ask questions and I would learn intimate details and I would have intimate interactions. Now that's just one of the things that I did. Now did I have to do that? Did I have to go out in the rain and, and cover up in coats and five layers? No, but I wanted to. Why? Because I was in pursuit of God and getting alone with God and everywhere I was there were thousands and hundreds of people. So I knew that getting alone was going to bear fruit because of my pursuit. And listen to me, family, there is a reward that comes and that is automatically released at every level of pursuit. I'm going to say that again. There's a different level of reward that is released at every level of pursuit. If you decide, OK, God, I'm going to read your Bible in its entirety in three months. Now, you don't have to do that. No, but you can choose to do that. You, if you decide I'm going to read 15 chapters of the Bible a day on my knees, uh, you don't have to do that, but you can choose to do that. What is that? That is a different intimate, individual, personal interaction with God that's going to bear fruit, family. I'm here to tell you, if you say, I'm going to pray in tongues for an hour every day, you don't have to do that. No, you certainly don't. But if you choose to do it, that's an individual pursuit that will bring about a reward in the form of fruit that comes out of the intimate relationship that you have with God. We've got to make the decision to diligently seek God so that we can be rewarded with the reward that comes for diligent pursuit. But you don't have to do anything. You get to do everything. You don't have to do anything. You get to do everything that you choose to do, that you choose to pursue. And if you choose to pursue God and the things of God first, you'll discover not only did all the things that you ever desire get added to your life, but you'll discover that that intimate interaction will make you a blessing to the world around you because God was able to bless the world through somebody who would pursue him rather than them. Listen to me, family. Every relationship with God is individual and personal. And God wants an individual relationship with you that is above and beyond anything you could ever imagine. But he's awaiting your pursuit. Many people are searching for God's purpose for their lives. Artist Freeman Nelson is a pastor and author who helps inspire positive transformations. His new book, Morphed, describes how each of us can be changed from a person burdened with regret to someone who is free to develop a close personal relationship with God. Available at Amazon, your local bookstore, or call 1-800-473-5106. That's 800-473-5106. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, can I have the honor of leading you in the prayer of salvation? Did you know that God loved you so much and wanted a relationship with you so much that he sent his son Jesus to come to the earth to die for your sins so that he could raise Jesus from the dead and you too could die to sins and then be raised from the dead brand new. If you'll pray this simple prayer right after me, today you can begin again and this will be your new birth birthday. Just say this simple prayer, say this, say, Father God, in Jesus name, today, Lord, I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my savior. I give you my sin and I receive your righteousness. And I now declare that I'm in a right relationship with God. In Jesus name, amen. Praise God, you just made a great decision. And welcome to eternity with me. In fact, we'll both be in heaven together experiencing the goodness of God forever, friend. And I want you to know that you no longer have to walk around condemned, guilty, full of shame, and feeling bad about the things you did because Jesus himself died so that you could be forgiven.